All right, I'm ready. Are you ready, babe? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Are we recording? Yep. Okay. We're good to go. Who wants to do the intro? Wait, didn't you do it on our Q&A last time? Yeah, you did. Yeah, you did, so it's on you, bud. <laughs> I wasn't prepared for an intro, but... <laughs> We're back to another very exciting episode of Shit That Goes On Our Heads. And as another season wrap-up, in this case season two, we are going to be doing another Q&A with our hosts, Dirty Skittles and G-Rex. Whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> we need one of those, those things queued up where you can we hit need... the button and it makes yeah, the sounds. Yeah, we need the soundboard. Yeah, it's like chicken and the fox on 102.6. What the fuck? <laughs> chicken and the fox? You could have went with like dinosaur and the candy or something. I don't know. Chicken and the fox. Get the fuck out of here. Who's the chicken? Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't you guys. It was just in general. Like they always have on the old radio. Yeah. Which I don't. Does anybody listen to radio? Do cars have radios now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Dinosaur eats the candy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> T Rex goes trick or treating. <laughs> so <laughs> the day T Rex turned d- dirty skittles into a lesbian. Oh damn! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> guess we're all in for a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Bizzle's just sitting here like, "What did I get myself into today?" <laughs> <laughs> For those that are listening, no prepared. it's literally Father's Day Eve, and I've got Bizzle sitting on a carpet floor <laughs> with uh, a mic and a headset asking us questions. Yep. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm Do ready. Up. So the questions are going to be a mix of things that viewers submitted, which was fantastic. Uh, G-Rex, do you want to throw out the show email, Twitter, all that stuff? Uh, so folks can actually submit even more questions for next season, submit guests, things like that. So maybe we could do a quick a social media plug before we get into the questions. Yeah. So you guys can find us all on uh, Instagram. It's uh, shit that goes on in our heads and it's shit spelled with a one. Uh, in on Facebook, it's goes on in your, our heads. Twitter, uh, it is st. It's the initials for shit that goes on in our heads. So S T I G No Shit S Yeah T T G G O O I I H H. It really rolls off the tongue. Um we're also on Tic Tac. Oh golly. We're, and uh, G-Rex hasn't even had anything to drink today. We're apparently 30 going on 70. Yeah. <laughs> Got that Tic Tac? <laughs> Find us on the Tic Tac. <laughs> We've broken G-Rex. Mm. She's literally bent over laughing into her desk. <laughs> Ooh, you are red, girl. <laughs> she has lost it. <laughs> oh, my I'm, word. Uh, okay, I'm good. I'm good. All right. So, all right, we're also on TikTok. uh, TikTok, okay, not the candy (laughs) TikToks. Got it. So maybe, maybe, and then uh, maybe Dirty Skittles, you can uh, talk about why we might be a little tired and punch drunk today. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Bizzle and I, for quite some time, have been debating on whether or not to get a new puppy because children are out of the question. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, well. As fate would have it, we did get a new puppy. His name is Mayor Styles. He is a some sort of doodle. What is he? A Swiss, Swiss doodle? doodle, which is also it's a breed of two doodles put together. <laughs> so, yeah, Inception doodle. So we have a, a male dog, and now we have, or we had a female dog, and now we have a male dog. So we've got a boy and a girl. Mm-hmm. So, so it's we like uh, a snickerdoodle. <clears throat> yeah, like a snickerdoodle. Yep. Uh, so we drove somewhere. Uh, G Rex was asking me earlier, "Where did we go to pick him up?" And I was South like, "South Carolina." I have no idea. South Carolina. 
I was like, I don't know. I put my audio book on. I was messing around with some stuff. And the next thing I know, we were there. But yeah, so we drove there and we drove back. And, and oh, we had to get up real early. Yeah, we had to. Well, Bizzle says really early <laughs> because if he's awake before 7 a.m., it's like the it's world a real is ending. problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we woke up at 6. And so for Bizzle, that's like really early. I'm used to waking up probably 4.35 to 6 around there. But um, yeah, we're we're a little exhausted, but not for long. I've got a rum and coke. Yep. A little ASMR. Yep. So, <laughs> so let's let's jump into it. Uh, so this is just sort of a generic first question, but um, I I'm curious what you feel like has changed, uh, each of you individually, uh, between season one and season two. So. You know, what are the major things that you feel like between the seasons are different, better, worse, areas for opportunity? Do you want to go first, your ex? Yeah, I'll go. I, I just think that we're in a better rhythm now. Like, we have better show notes now. We have better um, social media posts. Uh, we're asking better questions. Yeah. And and our guests, every single one of them has an interesting story. And every every episode, I walk away learning something new. Yeah. And so I, I really, I'm really enjoying this. And I, I think that we're like just getting into our stride now. And by, by the end of season three, we're going to have, um, in a much better stride. But the other thing that I'm happy about this season versus last season is that we actually had merch that went out. Oh yeah. And, uh, no, that was, that was really cool. <laughs> yeah. G-Rex really came in clutch on that. Um, for me, I will say, I agree with everything G-Rex has said. Um, I remember our last q and A. I I had mentioned uh, in season one, I had realized that I wasn't actively listening sometimes when we had the guests on. And so for this season, I was really trying to stay in the moment with our guests. Like, so whoever it was and whatever story they were telling. So I think that has been a change, at least personally for me. Um, we also got some like really good stories this season, I think. Yeah, yeah, like things like really made me think, you know, and put things into perspective. Yeah. So, you know, we're we're very I'm very grateful. Um and I'm you know, we're super blessed that these um folks wanted to come in and talk with us and share their story. Yeah, I think we've gotten into a good rhythm. I, I think next season I'm curious to see what our answer will be for this. Like we should keep this question going because I think with every season we'll learn a new thing. You know, like with yes. the process, like I'll, I don't think we'll ever do a three episode in one day again. That was like so exhausting. <laughs> so hard. So hard. Plus, we've been drinking, so it made it even harder. Yeah. Yeah. We recorded three in a day and that was that was about all of our limits, I think. Bizzle is correcting our puppies bad behavior already. <laughs> not not right. an ideal setup to have a brand new puppy in a room full of wires. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let's keep moving along and I'll keep my one eye on the dog, one eye on the You're you going to have so much editing in this episode. It's going to be wild. It's going to be just chopped up. No, no, we'll uh, yeah. So uh, I would also like to ask. I'm going to take that again. <laughs> <laughs> so this season we had a lot of firsts, uh, but I think the as a producer, the thing I was interested in asking about is um, we had a lot of two-part episodes, or at least we had a couple two-part episodes. And we had Pez and we had Mr. M. So I'm, I'm curious uh, how you guys felt, any thoughts about a longer episode. So traditionally they're about – they run about a half an hour or so. Um, but in these cases, the stories were compelling. The conversation, you know, just seemed very natural and flowed. But we wanted to split up into two parts. So what do you think of uh, having two-part episodes? I, I liked the two-part episodes. Um, our listeners, I will tell you, on the two-part episode with Mr. M, I must have gotten 14 texts. <laughs> of people are like, what the fuck? You left us with a cliffhanger. But you know what? That actually brought them back, right? Because now they they listen to that first episode and they're like god now they want to know what what happens on you know the second episode and when and with pez i i liked it that we broke it up into two separate entities because it was two sides of of of, of her life 
Mm-hmm. But maybe we'll split that into two episodes and, you know, bring a different perspective. What I found really interesting to piggyback off what you said, G-Rex, was I actually got a ton of texts from people about uh, the Mr. M episode and the cliffhanger. And they were both uh, annoyed <laughs> that we had such a such a aggressive cliffhanger, but also like really excited to hear the next week and find out more about the story. So, um, you know, I think... Every guest has been incredible, and I think we'll probably have a lot of folks back. Uh, so far, Mr. M and uh, Crazy 8 are the two that um, I've gotten the most feedback, so we'll definitely try to have them back next season. And I think we are talking about an interesting um, opportunity with Mr. M and the other, and bringing in the other folks that were actually part of the story, and they'll... Uh, share their side and their experiences, which I think would be really interesting. Yeah, I'd love to bring Pez back too. She has some really interesting perspective on life, and um, she she was just amazing. She was a lot of fun. Absolutely, yeah. One of my also, by the way, one of my favorite episodes to edit. In case anyone couldn't tell by the <laughs> by the uh, edits and things, I really enjoyed that a lot. Pez, how yeah. about you, Dirty Skittles? What do you think of the two parters? I I like it. Because so for the listeners that are out there, um, we obviously we keep it going. So like we don't stop and then come back in like a day. You know, we're not filming it in, or recording it in two parts. We can let the conversation go. And that's usually what determines, hey, this is a little bit longer than normal. We definitely need to make this two parts. I will say, Mr. Mr. M's episode, I'm really looking forward to season three to how to how that story progresses and continues to progress and hoping that we can secure some sort of closure for our listeners with all three <laughs> of the parties <laughs> involved in his story. It'll like be really cool. Closure. Yeah. Closure. We're, all, we're, I mean, even with the con- the exciting conclusion of, <laughs> of the two parter, there's still so many interesting pieces yeah. that I think we'd love to dive yeah. into. All right. Uh, what would you both say was some of the most memorable uh, parts of season two for each of you? I think every episode for me had something memorable, but like as we're talking about um, Kitchen Capers, I really liked Pez's story because I it wasn't it wasn't necessarily planned. I for I thought we were just going to talk about like kitchen stories and like nightmares that we've experienced in the industry. And I was like, yeah, we can, we can definitely do that all episode long, but her story and how it progressed and how she found strength within herself to do these things that she never thought she could do to me, that was so impactful and it happened so organically that I loved that. Um, and then just some of, you know, we had had some conversations with friends and, you know, I, it's not really a secret that I'm kind of like shy to tell people that, I, <laughs> that I'm doing a podcast, but, um, just like conversations that happen outside of the podcast with a group of friends saying, you know, we've known each other for X amount of years and hearing everybody's story in this format, it's almost like you're relearning who your friend is and like, it's deepening that relationship. So I, I really, really enjoyed that aspect of, of season two as well. Awesome. What about you, G-Rex? So I, when we were speaking with Bookie and just how she lives her life and puts everything into perspective, if, even living with a terminal illness, like it made me really, really think. Um, my wife and I are actually getting our wills done, are uh, getting everything taken care of now. Um, and it, it really made me think like why we travel, why, why we do these things, why we don't put things off. And then um, speaking with uh, Kathmandu Mm -hmm. and, and just seeing how he's through all the adversity he had in his life, Mm -hmm. how he's able to progress and, you know, seeing life through a kid's eyes. it, It, it really opened my eyes to some of the things that he's gone through and like, I, he's going to go so far in life. And, I, yeah. I'm, I'm just really excited about that. And then just speaking with our other guests, I learn something new every week. Yeah, um, truly. In some episodes, I get a little broken because you all make me laugh a little too hard. <laughs> but, um, I, you know, and like with Pez, you know, I learned so much from about her and her life story. And, 
you know, just dealing with shit in life and, and getting on with it and, you know, finding that inner strength to just, just say, fuck it. Yeah. I'm so emotionally involved now in every guest that we've had that, like, I, I think there's something to be said for that, too. Like, I think it's really cool to be able to take these relationships further, right? Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. I'm emotionally it's, invested in everyone. It's like my my unpaid therapy. Um, I, 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 get, I get a little therapy session out of, out of each session, and it's stuff I can take back and, you know, work with on my, in my own life. Dirty Skills is poking the dog with a lightsaber to get him to stop chewing. He's, Puppy, chewing, sorry. Uh, he's chewing trash. So, I mean, I guess that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> On the flip side, I think we had some extremely, um, trying to think of the right word, uh, like serious topics that we, we dove into. Uh, I'm thinking like Kate Bait, Juju B. Um, we really dove into some, you know, complicated topics that uh, you know, they might have been harder to to tackle. So it was really interesting um, on the feedback that we got. Um, we we did a survey and asked for you know questions, feedback, things like that. And it was really interesting to um, see the comments. A lot of people were actually really. I don't know if excited is the right word, but they had a lot of great feedback that um, you two really dove into these complex and detailed and you know hard to discuss sometimes topics. Um, so I'm curious, how do you how did you feel going through those having those interviews and how did you keep it lighthearted while at the same time give the you know the uh respect to such a, a complicated or i was really nervous when we had our first trigger warning episode i got really really nervous but um we 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 do prep a little bit right but we try really hard not to pre-script anything that we're going to talk about we wanted to just be natural but for that episode I did sit down with Juju because you know I I knew a little bit about the story not the full extent and I was proud of her for sharing her story but also concerned for listeners right because I don't ever want to put something out there that somebody's gonna consume and then be troubled by but I remember thinking oh we should definitely have a trigger warning on this episode and I was a little nervous I was a little nervous if that would be received well because we knew in the beginning, I think, right, G-Rex, we wanted to talk about mental health and everybody has a story and that's still very important to us. So it's not, it's not like that I want to shy away from the heavy topics because we've definitely had a few this season. It's a challenge to keep, keep it healthy because yeah. it's easy to get lost into the sadness, right? So it is. And, and trying to trying to get the um, the guests to feel comfortable and to, to open up. And I, I think that, you know, both of us are very nurturing and that we wouldn't, we don't portray ourselves as being experts. And we, we ask questions, but we're very cognizant of how we're asking them and making sure that, you know, we don't trigger them in any, any sort of way. Um, you know, same thing goes with Bookie. Like I knew her story, and I was very, I, I at first I was being very like tiptoeish around her, but she just opened up, and um, I think that having the two of us as guests, as um, co-hosts, we we bring a, a certain perspective and a light into the conversation that makes people feel comfortable to open up to us. Yeah. And we, we let them lead the conversation and we can interject. And, you know, even in the hardest topics, we were still able to laugh and, um, you know, get some levativity and, and yeah. get people thinking. And I, I, that is a testament to the both of us. Um, I, I think that we do a good job at that. Um, I, I'm still working on it, but, I, like I want to learn and yeah. you know mental health is a big deal right now mm -hmm. and having people share those stories that nobody else like is recording or being podcasts about and you know showing the world that, that you know we can all like get through life by while still dealing with mental health issues and um, we can still laugh about it too like hindsight for me is like 2020 yeah 
Okay. Yeah, I think, you know, the as a listener, right? So I do the pr- producing side of things, but as a listener, um, the thing I really like about the podcast and that I, I think we could do even more of is dive is dive into those uncomfortable questions because the reality is is like i i would like to ask those questions and hear the the kinds of response and hear from people that are in those situations um but but you know you don't always have a chance to ask them there's not always a a good forum to to find those things out or how or even how to ask them right it's not always easy to have that uncomfortable conversation with somebody and dive into it, but you want to, you want to learn more. You want to, and that I think just helps people grow and be able to interact with folks in a way that, you know, speaks to them that are perhaps dealing with whatever the situation is you're talking about. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah. Me neither. Yeah. Thanks for your insight. Bizzle. <laughs> He's <Aww>. blushing. <laughs> I've made my husband <laughs> blush. Uh, Greatest producer ever. Aww. Our, Oh, oh, he's blushing thanks. for real. Well, I'll, I'll follow. It. <laughs> well, I'm gonna follow it up with what? What should we change next season? Like, what are the big, small? Doesn't matter. What, Not what have barking puppies in the background. I, I think a couple of things that we're gonna do different is um, we're gonna be able to send out newsletters, um, mm-hmm. kind of give you a preempt of you know what's coming out on Tuesday morning. Um, maybe asking some of those harder questions. Uh, doing a little bit of homework before we do, before we record. Um, no, I think you're right. So I think, yeah, maybe like it's a fine line because we don't want to completely prepare and like script our questions because then it it's not as natural. But I think um, having some sort of a flow or format that we know we kind of want to stay on maybe will benefit from that. I think I want to also, and I said this before, in the last Q&A and I didn't follow through on it, but I am going to follow through on it is um, sharing more, at least from my perspective, like we have social media accounts, like it would be really nice to be able to share more than just the episodes that are posted. Right. <laughs> Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> what in the world is happening? Hold on. The puppy managed to tangle up in Bizzle's headset rip it off and like rope it around my chair <laughs> one hour later what are you planning in the new planner so i'm waiting sure. for the um the herbs that i just planted in the small ones to mm-hmm. all sprout and then i think i'm i was envisioning that would be a nice little herb e situation plant some, stra- plant some strawberries with it yeah 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 you did say that so I think uh, we kind of talked about this on the last Q&A, but I wanted to follow up now that things have evolved and, and changed over time. Um, so just re, you know, sort of I'd like to hear about why we started the podcast and what do you hope that comes out of it? Yeah, we started it. Um, as the story goes, I thought it was a, we were, it was just a hobby, right? Like something that we were going to do together because it made us both happy and it helped our mental health. And so we thought, oh, it would be really cool if we recorded this, put it out there. And I think ultimately we knew that other people were dealing with mental health just as much as we were. And it would just be nice to know that there are other people out there that share in those beliefs. And so I'm hoping that, you know, if there's anything anybody's getting out of it, at least a a laugh or a, a way to kind of feel better about their day or or just even learning something right so like right. a couple of the, a couple of the reviews that we've gotten on apple you know people walk away from our episodes and they're actually learning something and they're laughing and it helps them kind of get through their day and that's that's really the reason we did this is because for me laughter is healing you know yeah. it's a, a universal healer and some of our topics are really tough and it's hard to get a, a, a laugh out but there's always that that thin layer of levitivity in all of our conversations um, because I don't think there's been an episode yet where I haven't completely lost it and, um, and my co-host in laughter and my co-host and our guest um, broke me. <laughs> but, um, it, you know, I that's why we do it. Like yeah. we we help we help each other. This is like our unpaid therapy session. Mm-hmm. But getting to getting to 
uh, be able to talk to different people and their perspective and their lives, man, I learned so much. And, you know, being in my, I'm going to be 60 next month, you know, learning is, is still crucial to me. So yeah. is there anything you've learned, Bizzle, when you're producing our episodes that you want to do differently next season? Uh, technically or just uh, emotionally? Yeah, technically. <laughs> emotionally. <laughs> I mean, I guess both now. Like, who am I to deny you of your emotional feelings? <laughs> On the technical side, <laughs> it is so hard when you interview people you know or being part of it to not use their real name. Mm. That I would say, and I know we talked about this a little bit in the last Q&A, but that is, it's such a hard, hard thing to do. Um, yeah. I fall into it all the time. Um, technically, uh, the other the other thing I'm working on is just adding in more, uh, you know, just like silliness to some of the edits. I, yeah. That's been really, really People fun. People really enjoy that, right, G-Rex? Oh, they do. They really enjoy it. Yeah. Emotionally, I mean, for me, it's just, I, I would love to bring in more um, stories. Somebody was asking me, like, how do I describe the podcast? Originally, I was saying, oh, it's um, it's kind of like a little bit mental health, a little bit this and that. I think now I've kind of evolved the way I describe it to say it's basically vignettes or little stories uh, that people tell about their life that have a particular focus. And I, and I think in that sort of direction, just diving deeper, asking tough questions, like I was mentioning a little bit before, just, you know, I, as a listener, I want to, I, w- I would want to ask those questions and hear the answers from folks, but I don't always have an, an opportunity or it's awkward. Right. Mm-hmm. So in this setting, it's kind of, I think it opens up the opportunity to have that tough co- uh, conversation and ask those questions that people might be wanting to ask. I love that. I, I think one thing that I, I just thought about that I would like to bring maybe into season three it's for people to like send us like um, little uh, little voice emails mm. of their questions oh, and being able to like answer yes. those questions on the air. I think that would be a lot a lot of fun. Damn. And love that. I love it. G Rex, share your cell phone, your personal cell phone, and then people can send you little <laughs> voicemail snippets. No, can't they just? Really... No, no. I, I do love. I love the, yeah, the I snippets. Like, I, we should think of. We should figure out how to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Technically, I think that that is fantastic. So we'll we'll definitely for the listeners we'll definitely work on how to do that, and then hopefully if in these show notes we'll put how how to do it, and then in future episodes we'll we'll talk about how to do that. I love that. Yes. Yeah. Love it. All right. Um. On a, I've got some fun questions yes, that are just kind of like, uh, you know. Brain twisters or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> brain twisters? Yeah, it's like a hot glove. I was excited. Uh, <laughs> that's like an inside joke. And I sometimes Bizzle doesn't quite remember the name of common things, like um, an oven mitt. Yesterday, oh God, what a disaster! We were making grilled pizza, and his what is it? A Kamado? Yeah, we have like one of those little egg kind of things. Yeah, it's like an egg, like the green egg, something like that. And uh, we realized that that was a bad idea. We were burning it. And he's like, give me the hot glove. I need the hot glove. And I'm like, what the fuck is a hot glove? Are you talking about an oven mitt, bro? <laughs> like, bless your heart, sir. Yeah, so brain twister. Brain twisters. I'm dying to see what that really means. <laughs> All right. So here's your brain twister. Uh, so you're trapped on an island. You can bring one book and three things, three items. The book is not one of those items. So it's like something to read and then three items. What's the book you're going to bring and what are the three items? I'm going to jump in. Sorry, I got really excited. The Great Gatsby. Oh, you weren't expecting that, were you? (laughs) I was expecting your your French romance novel. Oh, God, I've fallen into another hole. Anyways, no. Uh, Great Gatsby is the book I would bring. The three items. So we, it's funny because at work we were just talking about this question and my mind immediately goes into every survival show I've ever seen on TV. So I'm going to say a machete, Mm -hmm. a fire starter. Okay. And if some way to fish. So whether it be a fishing rod, fishing line, something, those are my three things. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah, you're welcome (laughs) for that brain twister, whatever you call it. Yeah. (laughs) G Rex. All right. So uh, the book that we bring would be uh, Eat, Pray, Love. It's a good one. Uh, 
the three things I would bring, I'd bring a fishing pole. I would bring a sleeping bag. And I'd bring um, matches. Because you've got to stay warm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those are good. What about you, Bizzle? Oh, what would I bring? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you asked a question. <laughs> I didn't even think Get I would. <laughs> that brain twister twisted right back around at you. It's like a boomerang. <laughs> um, let's see here. What would I what would I bring? Well, for a book, um, I would there's one or the other, either would be fine for me. So I like science fiction, so I'd either bring the book Ender's Game or the Foundation uh series by Isaac Asimov. Both are sci-fi books. Um and then for the three items that I would bring, I would definitely piggyback off of some sort of bladed item. So either a, a hatchet or a machete, um, though that would be one. Uh, two, I would bring um, flint and steel. So like like you guys said, like a fire starter type uh, item. And then I did – I actually really liked the um, fishing gear. But you never know if you're actually going to have fish nearby. So, um, you're on an island. <laughs> Where are yeah. you if not nearby? It could be an island <laughs> in a lake. <laughs> I don't know. Um, that's tough. The third, the third item. I mean, I want to steal your your fishing line and fishing lure, but uh, yeah, it's bring not a, very. Bring creative. a pot. A pot. Yeah. So you can boil water. Oh, oh. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, yeah. So I'm going to bring a machete, a flint and steel, and a pot. <laughs> G-Rex, why do you hold your laughing? I feel like people aren't going to believe me when I'm like, she's laughing, I promise. <laughs> because I'm spitting on my microphone. That's why. <laughs> oh, we need to get her one of those spit guards. Oh, yeah. Anyways, sorry. The pop filter, yeah. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I call it a spit guard. He <laughs> called it a pop filter. He knows a pop called... filter. He doesn't know a hot pad or hot glove or whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> doesn't know an oven mitt. But hey, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it's all good. <laughs> all right. So we've covered uh, this on a few episodes um, that you both enjoy imbibing adult beverages. Mm. So what y'all drinking? Currently, I am doing a spiced rum and Coke. Simple. Is that your go-to? No. <laughs> it's not my go-to. <laughs> it is what I had on hand today. Uh, go-to is just a shot of tequila. A warm shot of tequila. No, not no warm, salt. bro. Come on. <laughs> Treat your lady right. Shake it on some ice. Pour it in a chilled shot glass. Hand it my way. All right. That's my go-to, tequila. G-Rex? My, my go-to is a uh, old-fashioned or a um, glass of champagne. Oh. Because I'm oh, bougie. classy. Simple. Like yeah, that. bougie. Okay. I love it. All right. So wait, can I ask a question? I just heard today that you can freeze grapes and put it in your whiskey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, a lot of people yeah. do that for like, what is it called? Bellini or something like that? Mm-hmm. The champagne yeah. with uh, raspberry, frozen raspberries and stuff? Yeah, the raspberry. Never oh, yeah. That. I'll give it a shot, though. We've got grapes okay. and a freezer Let- and whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's better with cherries. We have cherries. We do have Put cherries. the cherries in the freezer, get them nice and hard, and then drop them in your whiskey. Oh. Hey-yo. They're like little red balls. Hey-yo. Okay. Hey-yo. The alcohol's hitting, buddy. I want to speed these questions up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've got a f- just a couple last questions. Um I kind of want to plug our live episode that's coming up and maybe some exciting guests that we might be having and or folks and or folks that have, um, you know, just contributed in in different ways. So, um, GX, I'll start with you. Do you have anybody you want to plug or thank or anything like that? And then we'll talk about the live episode. Yeah. So I wanted to thank uh, the podcast Tales from the Cross Space. You guys fucking rock. You guys uh, plugged us on your episode, and you. our listenership went skyrocketed. And uh, every post that we put out on social media, you like and 
they actually bought some merchandise from us. So I, you <gasps> know, I, I, yeah, they bought a hat. So I'm love super that. excited about that. And I just love that, you know, podcasters are supporting other podcasters. And it's so important in this industry that, you know, you help each other out because there's 4 million other podcasts out there, each one of them a little different. But thank you guys very much. We really appreciate you guys. Um, I'm going to put a link out to your podcast on um, our Linktree account so that, you know, uh, you guys can go out and check them out. They're on on every single platform, just like we are. Give them a listen, y'all. They are really funny. Yeah, if you think we're irreverent, they are a thousand times more irreverent. They are pest control guys. And some of their stories are a little creepy, but um, I, I, I enjoy listening to it. Sounds amazing. I love it. Yeah. What about the live episode? Oh, yeah. Let's chat. We are going to do a Friendsgiving episode, but it'll be live. You can actually see us. That is coming, obviously, in November. <laughs> We've got a little bit of time. So. we got a little bit of time, but uh, yeah, we're going to do a Friendsgiving. We thought it would be cool to gather in person together and break some bread, do some tequila shots. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you're fun. doing tequila by yourself. Oh, we should do a drinking game. Oh, we could do a oh, drink episode. Okay. I, I, in line with that, um, I wanted uh, our listeners to know that we're putting together a YouTube channel also for the podcast. It has uh, snippets of each of the episodes, um, so you, you'll be able to follow us there. As soon as it's live, I will put that information in our show notes. Love it. All right. I have a, a couple more brain twisters oh, for it. you both. Uh, so I'm just going to say them, and you guys just answer, you know. However you want. All right. Thank you for giving us permission. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a couple more brain twisters. Uh, first one. If you won $10 million tomorrow, what would you do? I would pay off my debt, your debt, or my family's debt. <laughs> you get just your debt one? paid off. Just You'd one get just all. one. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, it'll be like um, Survivor. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I would not. I would I would take care of my family and myself first. And then with whatever is left over, I would if you're my boss and you're listening to this, <laughs> stop listening here. I would quit my job. I would dive a hundred thousand percent into my passion projects, including this podcast and like all my little crafting stuff and travel. Yeah. Cool. What about you, GRX? Um, I would pay off all our bills. Um, I would help uh, some of our friends that are a little less fortunate than uh, we are pay off all their bills. Um, travel. Uh, probably quit my job. And um, give some to charity. Well, I, I, you know, it's a sabbatical. You know, eventually I'm going back. Um, but I want to, uh, you know, help out uh, some of the underprivileged kids and underprivileged adults that are underserved. Um, So, you know, be able to dive into my passion, which is the podcast Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, do some tutoring that I I would, I would love doing that. I can see you like starting a charity of some sort. All right. Next question was, what did you want to be when you were kids? (laughs) Oh man. I wanted to be a doctor. You did? Like I a did. human doctor or like a, a like vet? like a like a human doctor, okay. but <clears throat> specializing um, in any particular area, a uh, pediatrician. But you know, life got in the way, and you know, now I'm doing a podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, Sorry, kids. Um, <laughs> my mom was a nurse, and um, I you know I I just loved how she took care of people, and you know, kind of fixed up all the kids in the neighborhood, and. I at one point had wanted to do that, but, you know, being a stupid kid and doing stupid shit, uh, that never happened. But um, I'm doing things I love now. So I wanted to be an astronomer and a lawyer, neither of which did I pursue. <laughs> I instead went to Johnston Wales University. <laughs> no, but yeah, I wanted to be an astronomer and a lawyer. Nice. I know. Could add all that money. I'm just kidding. (laughs) 
what would you what would you say was the biggest turning point in your life? Um, mine was when my mom passed away. It was um, a huge turning point for me. Like <clears throat> you know, my mom, I would be able to uh, talk to her about anything, and uh, you know, then all of a sudden that was gone. Um, I'm sure she's super proud of us. So I'm sure she is. Ah, uh, for me. That is a really hard question to answer because I think at different moments in my life, there have been turning points that led me to the, like, it's almost like you're reading a book where a chapter closes and then the next chapter begins. So there's not any one moment that changed my life totally. I think it's a culmination of things. My most recent one was seeing my therapy through, completing close to two years getting to a really good place mentally where now I'm in a maintenance mode um, and just r- the reward of that that I didn't expect when I started therapy I'm it has that has been one of the biggest changes in my life is just like rewards in ways I never would have expected so how about be- becoming a mom was that <laughs> like a turning point <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, I want to know because I don't have kids. So, yeah. So that's why it's like, it's hard. So that changed my life for obvious reasons, right? Like your mom and I right. have a child, but it was something that a little insight, right? I didn't actually want that in the beginning. I, I was totally fine just being walking this world alone. Um, And something changed in me in my 30s where. I think I talked about it on our Bizzle episode in season one where it was like once somebody wants to take that away from you, I realized just how much I wanted it. So actually accomplishing that. Yeah. You know, it it was a monumental moment that changed my life. But um, that was one of many. Like I'm a very headstrong female. So when I when I know who I want to be, kind of like what Juju said, picture who you want to be and do the things, take those steps to get. To be that person, that was one of the steps, was becoming a mom, getting married, moving, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I like, I've had, like, pivotal stuff, but the, for me, the, the biggest one was losing my mom. Yeah. Huh. I can imagine. What, what about you, Bizzle? Put you yeah. in a hot seat. Throw a brain, that's a brain twister, sir. <laughs> right there. Brain twister. My biggest uh, turning point. Um, I would say the first and probably the one that changed my path most, I would say it had the biggest overall impact on the trajectory of my life was, um, there was a period right after high school where I went to college and, uh, was not ready. I was not even close to being able to handle (laughs) the freedom that comes with college Right. I, I was, uh, um, I wasn't focused and there were too many fun opportunities that I took advantage of as opposed to, to studying and, and doing all that. So I worked as a, uh, you know, like as a bartender and things like that. Um, and then I happened to have the opportunity. Well, I got the opportunity to, to start an IT job. I had taken a friend in to apply for a job that he wanted to at this hotel. And I was sitting in the lobby while he was interviewing. It was like just flipping through the job openings. Cause in that day they literally would print out every day, a binder full of openings and they just had it in the front desk of this really? hotel. I didn't yeah. know they did that. Yeah. So I, I was just, I was waiting for him cause I was his ride and I'm flipping through and I saw that they had like a tier two kind of server administrator. And I'd done a lot of that in high school and I was like, Oh, well, What's the, what's the worst that could happen if I apply for this job? I ended up getting the job and that literally changed everything. I had a manager that empowered me to try anything and everything I wanted. I explained why it would be interesting. Um, I had like a real adult job, uh, you know, whatever you want to <laughs> read into that. And um, yeah, so for me, that that really put me on the path for everything else that came after, right? The opportunity to shift careers, get organized, get focused, ultimately go back to college, get my degree and things like that. So I'd say that was a thing that really uh, changed my life 
for the better. And it wasn't necessarily the job. It was all the things that went into being a responsible person in a professional job that enabled me to be the person I am today. Nice. Nice. I like that. Mm -hmm. So one last question and then we'll wrap up. And I'm hoping this is a super fun one. If you had to pick a spirit animal, what would be your spirit animal? (laughs) Mine is a unicorn. Ooh. Because it's a little different, right? Mm -hmm. It, it's a non-existent animal, but it kind of like goes at its own pace, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't, doesn't really, you know, doesn't really give a fuck what anybody thinks about it. Um, you know, uh, I don't know how the unicorn became a uh, representative with the LGBTQIA community, but it resonates with me. And, um, you know, I, I just like unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, though, a lot. My spirit animal would be. No, no, no. Um, similar to G-Rex, not a unicorn. I would say my spirit animal would be a wild horse. Yeah, running through a field, free hair blowing in the, <laughs> in the wind, finding its horse pack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. They're big, majestic, mysterious animals. Yeah, I like that. So, um. I have one question yeah. for the both of us. For season three, what are some topics that we might want to tackle? I can go first because I, I have yeah. something on the go tip. So I, I think a couple of topics would be um, living with uh, depression and um, being poor. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, talking to somebody about that. Um, You're saying like, another th- maybe like financial food et cetera, insecurity right yeah yeah Yeah. food insecurities financial insecurities depression uh, that goes along with that um i think uh getting some really fun guests on right um talking about their their life experiences like how they overcame adversity those are the stories i learned so much from so I, because for me, I take my life for granted sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I don't have everything in the world, but I do have, you know, I have my help. I have money. I have a house to live in. I have a car. Yeah. Um, and I often don't have to worry about, you know, where my next meal is going to come from. But, you know, talking to people about things like that and how they overcame, you know, those that, that adversity. It's hard to come up with something apart from what you just said, because I agree, like, I I like to learn from people, and I like to get to know people's stories. So there's not one, any one topic that I can think of that I want to cover, because they just happen organically. Um, But I keep getting asked, and I don't, and I have to, I guess, I mean, you can cut this out, Bizzle, if it's inappropriate, but people keep asking if I will ever talk about my story, and I just don't think I'm ready for it. I just right. don't think I'm ready for it because uh, you know what it really boils down to is that people I work with listen to it. So I'm just like, I don't want them knowing me like that, you know? Right. But I don't know. It's Maybe. Re- I have to say it's really interesting because, you know, a lot of companies now are doing the whole like bring your whole self to work kind of thing. I know. And I, per- I'm, I mean, this is not my podcast, but I do kind of sometimes struggle a little bit also with that because – You know, a lot of companies say that very few that I've ever worked with truly embrace the whole person. You know, people have. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes people are venting or they're, you know, they're not they don't really mean the full extent of what they're saying. They're just Mm -hmm. venting. Uh, So it's like I think that's an interesting line that you both walk in that, like, you know, people that you work with and for and whatnot listen. Yeah, and I I don't know. Maybe I'll come around to it. It's just that that's a very intimate part of who I am. 
right. that I don't necessarily, I don't know if I'll ever share my story, but I, I am definitely down to talk about like human rights and adversity yeah. and like, I'm very passionate about human rights. So, yeah. Well, like one of the things that, you know, um, I'm dealing with right now is you all know I'm writing a book right, mm-hmm. about what, what happened last year and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm suffering from some really serious writer's block right now. So you know, I went back and listened to a couple of the episodes of our podcast mm-hmm. because I need to practice some self-love and self-care because I've been really hard on myself. I've been waking up at like four o'clock in the morning because I can't write. And, um, you know, I, I do want to talk about those topics, you know, self-care, self-love, because that's important for everybody, male, female, young, old. Yeah. You know, if, if we're not taking care of ourselves, we can't take care of anybody else. Right. I agree. Couldn't have said it any better. okay to be not okay. Just make sure you're talking to someone.